Welcome to the Better Upper Lip, and thank you once again for joining me. I am Tyler, your host as always, and today we are kicking off with a very special beer. And by kicking off, getting into what I consider to be probably my favorite season for drinking beer, which is essentially fall going into winter. So starting with a full disclosure, and you craft beer drinkles will understand this polarizing opinion. I like pumpkin beers. I know. A lot of people, they can't stand the smell of them, let alone the taste of them. It's just one of those things that rub them the wrong way. I'm the same way with certain beer styles, so I can appreciate. However, I just like them. Um, but I'm also someone who's partial to things like pumpkin pie and essentially, at least in America, the types of cuisine that we eat around the fall time. Um, so I've been drinking pumpkin beers pretty much for, I would say, almost as long as I've been drinking craft beer. It's not been something I kind of edged into. Um, it was definitely one of those types of styles that I remember seeing on the shelf when I pretty much could be buying craft beer and knew I had to try it because I knew I liked pumpkin. So I figured today, let's go ahead and start off with what I consider to be like the granddaddy of the patch, the patriarch of the patch, if you will. Today we're going to be reviewing none other than Dogfish Head's Pumpkin Ale. So this is a brown ale. It comes in at 7% ABV. The IBUs sit at about 28. This particular bottle, uh, was, yeah, it was bottled on August 14th of 2020. I don't know if you'll all be able to see it up here on the ball, but it's right there on the neck. But trust me when I say it, it's August 14th of this year. So here on the side, there's not really much to the label. They got some spoopiness going on with the label, but it says straight up, a brown ale brewed with pumpkin, brown sugar, allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg. Perfect. So. Pumpkin Ale's actually got a really, really interesting history to it. For starters, Dogfish Head is what I would consider to be like one of the big, big powerhouse craft breweries, essentially one of the craft breweries that kicked off the American craft beer movement in the 90s. They came about in 1995, um, at least down here in Georgia, when ABV laws being in the Bible Belt were, you know, even more draconian than they were now. If I remember correctly, like you couldn't get any beer above 6% ABV. So in a lot of these places in Atlanta, it was essentially Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA, Sam Adams, maybe some Sierra Nevada, and that was really it. Pumpkin Ale is pretty cool because it actually debuted a whole six months before the brewery opened. It actually debuted at the 1994 Southern Delaware Pumpkin Chunkin' event. And if you don't know what pumpkin chunkin' is, um, it is gloriously American where you get a bunch of people basically saying, hey, build some machine. It can be a pneumatic howitzer cannon. It can be a catapult. It can be a trebuchet. Basically build something and hurl pumpkins as far as you can. So Sam Caligioni, who is the founder of Dogfish Head, entered pumpkin ale into a recipe contest they had and got first place with it. So this beer literally predates Dogfish Head the Brewery. Um, I don't know if you can say it's the first Dogfish Head beer officially, um, but it's it's definitely pre-brewery. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this in a glass, see what it's about. Um, I have not been able to get pumpkin ale um, for a while while I moved. For whatever reason, I just couldn't find it, as strange as that sounds for a couple years. Used to be only able to get in four packs. They've started releasing it now in six packs. So I think that has a lot to do with their merger with Sam Adams, which is good. I will definitely take two extras if I can. All right. Perfect. So looking at the head, uh, bubble consistency kind of reminds me of something like a root beer or a cream soda, um, not like a full cola. It's a little bit tighter. Uh, bubbles are dissipating pretty well, mostly large to medium. There is some tight bubbles in there. Color is uh, kind of an off cream, um, not a mocha, um, definitely more toward off white, off cream. Um, as you can see how I poured it, head is almost 
completely gone. Let's see, get the condensation off. And looking into this glass, uh, real nice carbonation going on. It doesn't look like a Pilsner or, you know, spontaneous fermentation or anything, but you know, it looks like it's well carbonated. Uh, very, very clear color. I mean, this looks like a garnet in the glass. A very, very deep mahogany orange brown going on. Um, the beer looks perfectly in color with its namesake, pumpkin beer. And it's very, very gorgeous. I mean, this looks like the top of John Adams cane from Jurassic Park. I think I mentioned that in a previous review before, now I'm thinking about it, but it does. It just looks like a big chunk of amber or garnet of some kind, or tiger's eye. All right, well, let's get this feast going. Let's get a nose on it and take a whiff. Yeah, they're nothing subtle at all. Um, big, big spice notes coming off of that, definitely getting, really the cinnamon's the first big thing I'm getting. There is a very nice vegetative gourdiness coming from it. Um, it smells like raw pumpkin. If anyone has ever made a jack lantern before, um, it has a bit of that kind of vegetative smell. Not that super kind of icky smell that you get out of a pumpkin, but much, much more subtle than that. Definitely smells like plant matter, but in a good way. Very sweet too. Um, I'm getting some brown sugar kind of molasses notes off of it. Um, it's definitely second place to the spices coming out of this. Yeah, I mean, with the sweetness and the spice, I mean, it smells like a ginger snap cookie is what I'm really getting out of it. There is, yeah, there is a little bit of kind of a malt sweetness coming out, kind of like a, a graham cracker a little bit. Um, no real toasty notes or anything that I would be getting out of a typical brown ale. Yeah, there's no like nuttiness coming out of it. It actually has, I mean, for lack of a better description, it actually has a very clean smell to it. Um, you get those kind of muddled aromas with things like toastiness, roastiness, and it kind of evokes that feeling of kind of like smoke, silkiness, things like this. This is a very sharp aroma on it, um, but it smells very earthy at the same time, which is odd. Yeah, all right. Let's get to the best part, shall we? Let's get some lip on it. Cheers. Yeah. So the aroma, I think, goes very well with the flavor. I'm initially getting really a lot of the same flavor I got on the nose. There's nothing random coming up. So front of the tongue, um, getting that very vegetative gourdiness kind of flavor coming from it. Definitely getting um, some spice. Um, I'm tasting more nutmeg in the flavor than I did on the nose. Some cinnamon coming through. Yeah, the sweetness isn't really even coming in until like, gosh, almost at the back of the tongue, a little bit in the middle, but really at the back of the tongue. And when you are getting it, it is that very expected caramelized sugar, brown sugar kind of flavor to it. Even though I kind of got a molasses-y smell, um, I'm not really getting a lot of that in the flavor. And that's not a bad thing because again, the the flavor is also, I think, very clean as to the nose. So there isn't this, again, like a roasty kind of, you know, deep burnt sugar sweetness to it. It's kind of very like light brown sugar. There is some nice bitterness in there. It's very light. Um, Kind of help balance out that sweetness. I mean, the bitterness I would say is very much akin to something like a pilsner or a lager. You know, there's obviously hops in it, but you know, very 
very much in the back of the stadium. You know, like you can almost barely hear it yelling from the paint of the court, if you will. Sweetness is also good. Again, um, now that I've kind of had it go over my tongue a little bit, I'm tasting a bit more of what I'm perceiving more of the malt sweetness coming through a bit more. Um, bit more of that crackery, graham cracker kind of sweetness. I'm getting that more on the sides of my tongue and in the back of my tongue a little bit. Um, front of the tongue is, I mean, really to me, the big thing I'm getting on the front of the tongue is the pumpkin flavor and the spices, really. Um, a lot of the bitterness and sweetness is not even really happening until middle of the tongue at the earliest, much more in the back of the tongue. Mouth feels very nice. Um, brown ales are kind of all over the place, I've found, in terms of how a mouth feel is. I don't really think there is any particular perfect mouth feel for a brown ale. It's nice and light. Um, it's not as light as a Pilsner um, or you know, something like a Kolsch or something, or, you know, anything like that. There is some nice way that's telling you, okay, this is full of some nice adjuncts, the pumpkin, the sugar, etc. But it's still very refreshing. Um, I'm getting a feeling like, even though this is 7%, which by the way, I'm not really getting any kind of alcohol burn on this whatsoever. I mean, it's 7%. I'm not expecting it to necessarily, you know, be putting heat in my mouth, but 7% is not exactly sessionable either. Um, but all the same, I feel like I could easily put down a couple of these for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it doesn't feel like it's so heavy that I can't have a meal with it, let alone have a couple of these. But it also isn't so light that I just feel like I'm washing down with water. Like there is a nice kind of coziness, if you will, about this beer where I feel like I could also just as easily be drinking this by the fireplace or if I was like wanting to go out on my porch on a really crisp cold night and drink this beer, it would be, you know, a nice complimentary warmer. Yeah, going back to the mouthfeel, the carbonation, I think it's very, very good in this. There is enough carbonation where you're feeling some of the bubbles on your tongue. It is helping to kind of clean the finish up a bit. There is, I'd say, about a nice medium finish on this. It's not dry at all, but it's not something like I'm drinking a big Imperial Stout. It's on a nice Goldilocks level. And the carbonation helps that a bit. But at the same time, with a beer like this and that cozy factor, if you will, we're just gonna trademark that cozy factor, um, it, it doesn't take away from the fact that this is a beer that you can just as easily sip on if you want, or you can put one down and open up your second one within an hour if you want. That's warmed up a bit. I'm not, not really getting anything new on the nose. Uh, it could be a good or a bad thing depending on who you are. See, I'd say that my ultimate verdict on this is one, if you are a craft beer drinker that is in that camp of, you know, no gourds, we want a gourd-free zone, you just don't like pumpkin, you're going to hate this because it's a very, it's a very uh, non-apologetic take on a pumpkin beer. Not just because it has pumpkin, but to me, one of the first, again, smells and flavors I'm getting out of it is that again, kind of squashy, gourdy, vegetative flavor out of it. However, if you are one of those people that does love pumpkin ales and you've never had this before, then you are doing yourself a disservice. Again, this is a very much a godfather entry into the pumpkin ale subgenre. Still very, very good from what I remember. Um, I don't really have any qualms to say about this beer. Um, it's very, very tasty. Um, I would say, though, again, recommendation with an asterisk. If you hate pumpkin beer, then there's no point. This is not going to be, I think, a beer that saves you, potentially. If, if anything, it's going to be validating of why you don't like pumpkin beers. 
But on the flip side, um, one of the things I think I like about this beer the most that I discussed is not just that it's a pumpkin beer, but it seems like it's a very, like, oh, man, like, just like a Leatherman, like the tool Leatherman. Like, you could use this in so many different avenues, as I'm doing right now, just having an after-work beer, talking to y'all. Something that you complement with a meal, something that you want to drink by a fireplace. I'm even curious to see what you could do cooking with this. And, you know, moving on to food pairings, I mean, the obvious is Thanksgiving. That Absolutely. An American Thanksgiving dinner, turkey, stuffing, gravy, green bean casserole, little cranberry sauce, all that. This is as good of a pairing with this as a nice cab would be with a porterhouse steak. Um, I am curious, though, in terms of, like, maybe using this in, like, some kind of marinade if you're roasting, like, a pork loin, um, or even maybe in some desserts, possibly. If there's a dessert that calls for, like, water or of, of some kind, using this instead, possibly. But, uh, but yeah, I'd say that pretty much closes it up, folks. So, thank you very much for joining me. I'm happily going to continue sipping on this and might open up another one here in a bit. But, as always... If you enjoyed the episode, if you have any comments uh, about this beer, pumpkin beers in general, or again, what the hell is pumpkin chunkin? Uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, if you want to get updates on when the next episode of the Bitter Up Relip is posted, go ahead and click the notifications on the bell and you will know as soon as I post these live. But without further ado, everyone, until next time, just remember to keep your mind clear, your heart pure, and your upper lip bitter. We'll see you then.